Yeah, I want to thank you all for being here. And it's one of the, like, I have the pleasure of representing our group, our investigators from multiple countries that embarked on the study of tisogenic leucil in large cell lymphoma. And this is a longer term follow up of the preliminary early data that was presented last year at ASH. Um, just to state that this is, again, you saw some of these, the early part, tisogenic leucil is the first approved gene therapy, the first approved CAR therapy in the United States. May 1st of 2018, it was approved for a large cell lymphoma. It is a single arm, uh, open label trial, so we, there's no randomization. We know where patients are getting it. And we will update this analysis as this is 19 month meeting for um, follow up. The reason this is important is that Early on, when you look at data early, you can always worry that the trial has selection bias. You pick the best patient as it doesn't represent real life. As you move into 19 months, you know, follow up, the median 19 months, you are now looking at the real natural history of disease. And these are patients with multiply relapsed refractory large cell lymphoma. Um, the best, the primary endpoint was best overall response, which is CR and PR, sorry, complete remission and partial remission, with sec key secondary endpoints of duration of response, um, overall surveillance, and safety. Now, just for the event, this will be presented tonight in poster session. Um, I'll be there for most of it, or Dr. Stephen Schuster, who's our first author in the publication. This is just to announce that at 9 o'clock this morning, this paper has just been published by New England, it was announced for publication by the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, as far as the data, the overall response is 54%, of which 40% were complete remissions, 14% were partials. Of the patients who had partial remission, we do know that um, half of them went on to develop complete remission over time. So the drug continues to work again over time. You can convert from partial to complete. The overall response um, data was seen. There's multiple subgroups of large cell lymphoma. It's a very complex disease. But whether you, all the potential prognostic subgroups, we could not see um, a predicted group that was likely to be favored or also predicted to fail with CAR-T. Also important is the median duration of response was not reached for the patients who were responders. And for patients who um, were in complete remission, over half of them, the median remained free of and alive with the median overall survival not being reached. And for all patients infused, it was 11.1 months. The figure on the right actually compares as an overlay of the data from uh, the Juliet study compared to one prospective as well as one retrospective study of similar patient population. And again, early on you have patients that will fail, but what we see is we're approaching, a, again, a plateau, but we're definitely seeing a change in the natural history of the disease to the best of our ability to interpret the data. As far as safety, we have similar profile, but not to the same degree as tisogen like Lusa when treated with acute lymph with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It's a lower degree of the cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. And this may be in effect relate to the fact that when you infuse the cells, they don't immediately encounter in the same vascular space their target antigen. They have to traffic out of the vascular space into actually lymph node or spleen or other organs. And so this may, as I hypothesize, may at least contribute to lower degrees of the, the adverse events seen, but we still do see 25% with advanced grade three, four GVHD. And again, I would as, as also share that these grading system is a, um, is a very liberal system that is under, um, that over identifies toxicity compared to the Lee criteria, which has now become more generally utilized. Since the previous report, no new deaths have a cause other than due to any um, cause other than one patient with disease progression, no treatment-related mortality was seen throughout the entire study. And there were three early deaths, all related to lymphoma that progressed through. So in conclusions to share with you, this is the data from with a longer median follow-up of 19 months. Just to say again the high points, the overall response was 54%, and for patients responding, the median duration response was not reached. In a similar population, of patients, we would have predicted a less than 10% complete remission in a, a five month median survival. So thus it was improved over historical um, options and, and, also, and I would say the adverse events were similar. And this is just a final slide to say that when you begin work, I mean this is, this is the beginning, not the end. 
you know, what we are doing is hoping you'll hear about ways that we can build on the primary first generation T cell therapies. We have six current projects that are coming out of this database, some looking at dosing rationale. We are doing two presentations on, on Monday. We'll be looking at regrading toxicity using the Lee scale or the neurotox scales that have become more commonly used. We're also doing work on health economics as well as examining what happens when the cells are given in remission. So I want to thank you for the time and appreciate the effort. And I also will um, vouch for Dr. Oliver. This is the importance of that this has become a health economic issue that we all need to be aware of and highlight. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.